This is a brunch pre-Oscars mini podcast that contains spoilers, but we can't imagine you care. If you haven't seen the movie and you're afraid of spoilers, there's no way you would logically seek out a podcast about the movie. Let us begin. The Fablemans is a coming-of-age quasi-autobiopic. Autobiopic? Yeah. From Steven Spielberg about a young boy who falls in love with filmmaking, led by a strong ensemble cast. The Fablemans is nominated for seven Academy Awards. Best Picture, Best Director, Best Actress, Michelle Williams, Best Supporting Actor, Judd Hirsch, Best Original Screenplay, Best Original Score, Best Production Design. It has a 92% on Rotten Tomatoes and a runtime of two hours and 31 minutes. This is movie is the closest thing to last year's best picture winner coda and i'm not sure if it will win even one award that's generous yeah i I mean i am not sure it's going to win one award either i I think this is a movie that does a lot of things well but nothing great oh no i think it's a great movie i i don't i I think it's i think it's it's great but i just don't think any category that it's in you're like well it's going to get trampled there it's going to get trampled there although This is one of four movies. May I'll I'll need to dig in and look at the others, but just like off the top of my head, it's one of four movies that I could see winning Best Picture this year. I would be shocked if this movie won Best Picture, just because for me, it it doesn't do anything spectacular. In my experience with it, it was that I really liked it, like I enjoyed my time with it. But the further I get like detached from it, it becomes kind of forgettable. It's you know the story is nice and it looks great. It's well acted. But beyond that, like I don't know, it's not nothing. It's nothing too crazy. It feels a little Oscar baity to me. Family movie, coming of age, written and directed by Steven Spielberg, Michelle Williams being the mom. There's so many things about this movie. You said Oscar baity. There's so many things about this movie that if it were to win in any given year, you're like, yeah, like it, it, this. It's a boring win. This movie wins. seems like a movie that would in a vacuum win best picture or be some sort of favorite there's a lot of movies in this year's group that just so obviously aren't going to win avatar clearly isn't going to win we don't think top gun's going to win oh that would be super fun it's like asking chat gpt like hey uh give me an idea for what maximizes my opportunity to win best picture yeah coming of age steven spielberg uh stacked cast looks great is about filmmaking yeah like it that'll that'll do it so you mentioned that this is the biggest love letter of the best picture noms and uh we're we're big love letter guys we 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 track whether anything in media could be a love letter to something Mm -hmm. this pete is a love letter to filmmaking it's essentially a love steven spielberg writing a love letter to himself and i mean steven spielberg does a bit of bradley coopering Mm -hmm. where he makes himself look like the good guy obviously i mean he doesn't get the girl in the end but he he handles bullying in a more mature way than anybody would. He he makes himself look very good. And this character is not named Steven Spielberg. There's a lot He's of hindsight Sam involved. Failman Sam yeah. is the last name, I think, yeah. in this one. What do you mean? There's, like, there's a lot of... Uh, there's a lot of like adult perspective projected or injected into a child that probably wouldn't have that perspective. Which uh, the movie King Richard last year did just the opposite. They took a very childish approach to looking back <laughs> on how that kid totally cheated to beat venus remember oh yeah venus yeah. totally would have won that yes, they just like yeah. held this like 25 year old grudge against the child that was incredible i forgot they did that that was my favorite uh, part of that movie but like looking through the categories for which it's nominated best picture again it's one of i i, I think everything everywhere all at once is gonna win i think banshees of inna sharon could win and then after that it's this and then like the real long shot crazy one would be Tar, and then uh, but other than that, like well, like Top Gun. So Top Gun, I said that that would be the the fun one. But yeah. That's not winning Best Picture. No, probably not. But I don't think this is either. I don't. I don't eat. eat so. Do you only think one movie could win Best Picture? No, I think there's two. I think it's like a two Just, horse race. It, it is. But if there were some, huh? It would be this, or to an extreme, it would be Tar. It's going to be everything, everywhere, all at once, though. Best Director, I think that this movie's only real path to winning stuff is if everything, everywhere, all at once ends up going ignored. 
and then this swoops in and grabs like best director because this is if the if the Daniels somehow don't win best director, this will because it's Steven Spielberg. Yeah, uh, Martin McDonough I think has a, has a I'd shot. Love that. Yeah, I, I think that I don't know th- this. This again, it's it's so boring. Like it's such a boring contender. Uh, like I'm not going to say that it doesn't belong there, but like Steven Spielberg doing this is not entirely uh, fascinating or interesting or exciting. So like if he were to win for this, it would feel like a kind of like a lifetime achievement award more than anything. I mean, the man made the post. This is the comeback of the millennium. That's you're you're not wrong, I guess, because what did he do? What else did he he did Ready Player One? Last year he had uh West Side Story. Oh, correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was that was much better, so I thought. He's on a bit of a heater. You think that West Side Story was better than this movie? Yeah. I I would disagree. Um it's more memorable. This like, is a this is a really good movie. It, I mean, like, it, yeah, West Side Story's been done a bajillion times. This is a really good movie. It's not crazy and pushing boundaries. And the the two movies that will are most likely to win this year, although actually not most likely to win, um, All Quiet on the Western Front has better odds than Banshees right now. But the two movies that we would think could possibly win are a crazy multiverse movie in Everything Everywhere All at Once, and then just like feelings torture porn in the Banshees of Inisherin. So of course this isn't going to stand out to you the way those do. One shakes you all around, the other one grabs you. This is more of a picture. Go into a picture and you see the Fablemans. Yeah, and so I, I don't know. I'm I'm a little torn on like whether or not I think uh, whether I think um, the West Side Story is better than this now because like I think overall probably not, but like West Side Story's presentation was better than this. West Side Story like, was good. Like the costume design, the like the sort of staging and the the set design was exceptional. And I again, like my big problem with this movie is I don't feel like it does anything to an exceptional degree. Performances. Even Michelle that. Williams is awesome. She's great. Julia Paul, Butters is great, but like Yeah. But I forgot not, about Julia Butters. But even. not good enough to like to t- to take any attention away from the people that we've been talking about this season. Exactly. And this is Michelle Williams's fifth Academy Award nomination, which is awesome. This is her uh she's been nominated twice, I want to say, for best supporting actress, Brokeback Mountain and Manchester by the Sea, best actress for Blue Valentine, My Week with Marilyn and The Fablemans. Manchester by the Sea, I think she has she didn't win any of these and she's not going to win this one. But Manchester by the Sea, I thought was an Oscar winning worthy performance. Agreed. That was just the year that Viola Davis won for Best Supporting Actress in Fences when Fences was Denzel Washington and Viola Davis. So I don't really know how that worked out. So a lot of really good performances got screwed there. But she's great in this. Paul Dano, I thought was really good in this. I wouldn't have nominated him for anything, but you're right. Julia Butters, awesome. The one that's really interesting, though, is that Judd Hirsch is nominated for Best Supporting Actor, and he is great in this as Uncle Boris, the uncle of Sammy who comes in, although not not his uncle. It's uh, Michelle Williams' yeah, uncle. He's a cr- crazy uncle. and But he comes, and he's done the entertainment thing, and he really strikes a chord with Sam, Sammy at the time, because he... A, comes from the entertainment thing, but also is so intense that Sammy, being someone who's drawn to maybe not doing whatever the norm is, is like, yo, I'm going to come across people like this. So even though he's pretty rattled by this guy, he's he, he feels some sort of connection with him. And it's a very big part of the movie, but he's not – he's in like – the under 10 minutes. Yeah. Literally. I, I went to crunch these numbers and – Fortunately, the LA Times already did it for me. He's in fewer than 10 minutes of this movie. Uh, Judy Dench won Best Supporting Actress for eight minutes of Shakespeare in Love. And then who, who else? Um, last uh, year, last Beatrice year. Beatrice Strait last won year in Belfast. five minutes for Network. Last year in Belfast. The um, grandfather? Yeah, but he was like in it. Yeah. He just like wasn't doing wasn't, as much. Wasn't uh, the grandmother... Yeah, Judy Dench was nominated for Best Supporting Actress, but I think the one that we were rattled by was uh, Kieran Hines, who was the grandfather. Okay. But when I, I don't remember the movie well enough, even though I saw it multiple times and loved it. But there was for sure some 
Really? There weren't people who did more than that guy? In the case of Judd Hirsch getting nominated... He stole every scene he was I agree in. his performance was great, but he's so not going to win, especially this year where Kiwi Kwan is going to win that award five times. I would have... If I'm casting a vote, I'm like, who do I want to get nominated and lose? And Judd Hirsch, 87 years old, legend. You want to get him out there as often as possible. But I'm like... Do I try to get Mark Marin a little love when he's gonna like he's definitely no. going to lose, but he plays such a great role and he does a great job into Leslie. It's like, do you try to sneak him in there I don't think to he lose a, he, anyway? He didn't do a better job than Judd Hirsch. I agree, but so. he's in more than ten minutes. Barry Keoghan's in uh, is nominated, isn't he? Yeah. Okay, good. So I, I would have said like if he but wasn't, he's in a lot of Banshees. He's in more correct, than ten minutes. Correct. Correct. Yeah, he holds a, a bigger role. Uh, Judd Hirsch, like I, I don't have a problem with him being nominated just because like he really did dominate every scene that he was in and he crushed that role. It just it, I just have a bigger a, a problem when the role isn't very big. So if this does win, you're disappointed. If this wins Best Picture, yeah, I, I don't, don't think definitely. it does win Best Picture. It will feel. A little better than like Green Book wasn't that infuriating and Shape of Water wasn't that infuriating. But those were weak years. Right. Shape of Water was like a really good movie and won Best Picture. Really good movies win Best Picture. This would be more of that. If this won, I'd be like, yeah, really good movies win Best Picture and the best one doesn't always win. I'd be upset that it won over Banshees or Everything Everywhere All at Once. But with this group, there's so many good movies, but so many that just so clearly aren't going to win. Like I said, Triangle of Sadness isn't going to win. Women Talking isn't going to win. Top Gun isn't going to win. All Quiet on the Western Front, not going to win. So if the favorites don't win, it will be something like this or Tar. And Tar would just confuse the shit out of everybody. I would rather this win than Tar, just because I don't want to have to explain Tar to people who didn't see it. Uh, I, I get that point of it, but like I also think that like Tar would be a more exciting Best Picture win. Like this, yeah. that, that would be like, ooh, all right, we're going to have some conversations about this. This wins, and it feels very standard and very boring and safe. Yeah, and this, yes. This would be a safe Best Picture win, and, and I think that this is a very unsafe year, which wh is why I think the safe pick would bother me so much like everything everywhere all once is so different and crazy uh, even banshees of inish Aaron is like very unique top gun being a very exciting like action movie nomination and doing shit to like an astounding degree in that department there are so many different ways that i think that you could justify a unique and exciting pick so to go with a safe pick in this one would bother me a lot but if it won people would be so confused if they hadn't seen this movie and then saw, because when Best Picture wins, everybody gets up on stage. People would be quite confused by this movie when they see all those motherfuckers up on stage. They'd be like, is that Seth Rogen and a monkey? <laughs> What's, who, Michelle Williams, I know her. Paul Day, yeah, it seems like he'd be in like a Best Picture winner. He it has, has a Best Picture, like award winning cast. For yeah, sure. it's got like a, it's got, but I mean, Seth Rogen throws it for a loop. Although Seth Rogen's gonna have, there's going to be some Seth Rogen, Adam Sandlery stuff where people are like, are we supposed to take him serious? Yeah, I think that we take him seriously Dude, is no, uh, no way because he, he's been doing he's been doing like good movies for a while now. No, but, but I'm saying like so the average person who hasn't seen the Fablemans doesn't know that. I don't know. They're like, isn't the last movie he did the the night before with uh, <laughs> who else is in the night? before? You know what they should do is if it wins Best Picture, this is the way that you can make the Fable Fablemans winning exciting. You they win. You have Paul Dano going up there, giving his speech, accepting it, and then he gets cucked by Seth Rogen. Yes, that's it. We talked about this one winning more than we talked about any of the others winning. So now I'm like moving it up my odds list of like now it's going to fucking yeah, win. I don't know. Like you you did this. You were the one like, all right, well, how are you going to feel when it wins? And no, I'm no, like, when what? it wins. If it, no, I've, I've done that at the end of every one. Yeah, I know. Unless they've been going too long. This one... I don't think it's going to win. I've said that everything everywhere all at once is going to win. And they've since updated the betting odds. And now if that doesn't win, it's going to be chaos in the streets. But if everything everywhere all at once doesn't win, this is in the very small group of movies that could win. Banshees would be the feel good one. This would be the 
oh well they the the favorites didn't win so this one would win yeah i, I think that this is a, a good movie like i don't want to poo poo on this movie but like it's one of those situations where relative to the rest of the of the field it's not very exciting but i did i did like this movie quite a bit and i enjoyed my time with it so like if you're if you're looking at this at this movie and you're like, huh, should I watch this tonight? I would absolutely say, yeah, go for it. It's, it's really well done, and it's uh, an enjoyable two and a half hours. It's a long No, two movie. hours and 31 minutes. Okay. Sorry. 